channel um, so I'm in my garden today and it's most glorious weather we're super lucky in the UK um, since we've been isolated I'd say probably 70% of the time has been amazing weather and not even just like a bit of sun literally like so warm blue skies like I'll show you how blue our skies are that is just gorgeous isn't it so I wanted to do a garden tour video, Montessori inspired garden tour. Um, so when I say Montessori inspired, there are certain elements that I've tried to include in our outdoor space, which I think are important to kind of Montessori education and kind of philosophy. So the first one is safety. Um, I like to think of our home as kind of a yes space, um, really open, not really a lot of areas where she can't um, explore uh, and I try to keep it that way so that she has more control over her environment she's independent um, and I don't have to keep redirecting her to try and keep her safe so if there's anything really in the home that I don't want her to access I'll usually put it away or I'll close off any particular area where I don't want her to go so I kind of wanted it to be the same in the garden I want it to be very open very free um, for her to explore and kind of enjoy so um, so yeah safety was a big, big aspect um, making sure that the garden is safe for toddlers because they want to explore everything so the th second thing I wanted to make sure that I included was some practical life um, opportunities for activities so things that she can um, learn from uh, participate in and help with because you know toddlers like to be really really helpful uh, so I've made sure I've included um, kind of child sized tools and um, brooms and things like that so she, that she can uh, kind of get on with those types of activities uh, and learn those skills so the third thing was lots of flowers and lots of uh, plants so that we can get more kind of wildlife and bees and bugs in the garden um, so that she has an opportunity to kind of explore those um, and take notice of those in her environment as well. I also think it's really important for children to learn um, how to take care of their environment, how to take care of plants, how plants grow, all these things are great learning opportunities and that kind of stuff is so simple in your back garden um, so she helps me water the plants she helps me prune them um, I kind of show her how plants grow and we plant things together and watch them grow so I think those things are really great for children so those are the types of things that we do in the garden together and they're the kind of things that I had in mind when Mia was born those I kind of love the idea of us doing those kind of beautiful activities together so the next one is learning how food grows so I wanted an area in the garden where we could plant things, watch how they grow um, and then eat them at the end of it. Uh, at the moment, because it's springtime, we've just planted some potatoes and we've been talking about like how the kind of things she's going to be eating when they're done. So they're growing really well and she loves coming out in the morning and, and having a look at those. I also wanted a kind of sensory area, a creative area where she could enjoy things like water and sand and mud and make all sorts of creations. Um, so we've got uh, an area for that. That was quite important as well. I think especially as a toddler gets older, kind of into like two, they love to be more creative, use their imagination more. Um, and that kind of sensory input is quite important for toddlers. So I wanted to include that in our space as well. The next thing was um, an opportunity for more wildlife. So some kind of water area, water feature was something I wanted to include as well to give her more access to um, potential wildlife. So physical activity was quite important. So I wanted an area for her to climb, um, opportunity to learn skills, uh, using her body in different ways, building that kind of gross motor movement was quite important as well. But I also wanted it to be a space which was really open uh, where she can explore. Um, we don't have the biggest garden, uh, it's, it's quite a small garden to be fair. I didn't want it to be overly cluttered but I kind of wanted it to be have a nice flow and to be designed in a way where there's lots of opportunity for play and exploration and as I said just to be a really nice kind of yes space. So that's hopefully what I've done. It flows really well at the moment because we're having such good weather we're using the garden a lot um, and uh, yeah she's loving she's loving 
kind of springtime and all the like birds and bees that are coming around and all the like wiggly worms that we're seeing um so yeah hopefully you like my garden if you don't then that's okay but um hopefully it gives you a kind of idea on the kind of things that you can include if you want to uh, kind of go along that kind of Montessori route and the things that are important in kind of a Montessori garden so yeah I'll show you around <laughs> So this is the first area of the garden which I'll show you. I did a video on this when I put the mud kitchen in. Um, so if you look back over my previous videos, there's one um, which details kind of what we put in and all the kind of various materials. So this is our kind of version of a mud kitchen. Um, it's basically just like this frame on the wall and we've got a, it's very well used this morning as you can tell. <laughs> we've got a, um, bucket here for water water dispenser and then various like cups and things um, pots and pans down here trays so they can make all sorts of different creations this is yesterday's grass soup <laughs> which was very delicious um, over here I've just got lots of natural materials which we found on our walks so sticks and things which are used for stirring and all sorts of stuff and then I've got some baskets down here, which I've just put some shells and um, rocks and things in this one. And then we've got pine cones and just wooden materials, little sticks here, um, nets and just a few flower pots over here. Um, and then over here is the mud. And then they also have access to a tap. So everything is really easily accessible for toddlers. And then over here we've just got a table which they can use to kind of sit down and serve up dinner or whatever they want to do or make their food on. And then we've got a couple of watering cans over here. So from here I'll go into the actual garden itself. As you'll see it's not a really big garden. It's a nice size but we were aware it's not the biggest garden in the world. So when I kind of decided the kind of things I wanted to include I had to be quite careful about space. Um, so over here we've got a climbing frame which is specifically for toddlers so she's been using this since she was about one um, it's really nice and low it's got these steps here at the back so they can practice climbing to get up on this platform here and then you've got the slide which goes down and then on this side you've got the rope climb which is more of a challenging one she's just kind of learning to do that now and then on this side you've got more of a kind of like um, slats which they can put their feet in and then you've got these to make it more challenging more like a rock climbing wall um, yeah so this is really good size and it doesn't take up too much room but I really wanted them to have some kind of climbing um, option in the garden to kind of practice those uh, skills for kind of motor movement and then under here it's kind of like a little den which they can like hide in and Sometimes we read in here and, you know, we'll sometimes cover it over and make it into a proper little den because um, you've got this kind of shape here which you can put tarpaulin or, you know, towels or blankets over the top. Um, so I also wanted to have an area where we could grow things. So over here we've got um, a raised bed. And in here at the moment we're just growing some potatoes and they're doing really well and Mia loves coming out here every morning to see if they've gotten any bigger and she loves watering them and taking care of them obviously taking care of the environment learning how things grow where food comes from they're all really great things to be teaching children and um, yeah so I think any garden really should have an option to grow something I mean even the smallest gardens you can grow herbs or you know whatever really on windowsills you don't really have to have much of a garden space but yeah it's just lovely to have her taking care of something and getting excited about waiting for it to, to eat it I keep asking her what she wants to make with the potatoes and she always says chips naturally because chips are awesome um, over here we've got some peas which we just planted on the 17th and so they haven't started growing yet and then we've got beans over there and then this is a cute little fairy garden that 
her grandma bought her. So the idea is that um, the flowers grow and then they're supposed to kind of trail over and the bottom as well. And when it's kind of in bloom, it looks really beautiful. So I'm looking forward to that growing. So kind of um, maybe four or five months ago, I put in this frog pond. I really wanted to have some kind of water feature or a place where kind of wildlife could gather. Um, we haven't actually got any frogs yet because obviously we're just into spring. So this is the kind of year time of the year where they start hatching. Um, but we have actually got some kind of wild, some animals growing in there. I think those are little mosquito larvae, which wouldn't be my first choice, but I'm kind of glad that there's something at least living in the pond, which is kind of cool. Um, and then over here we've planted some wildflowers for bees, which we did a few days ago. That was a nice activity, so we're just waiting for those to grow. So I put these logs at the end of the garden because they're, it's nice and dark and it gets very kind of damp at the back here because it doesn't get a lot of sunlight. It's a really nice place for um, kind of mini beasts to hide and live. So um, particularly during the more kind of wet months, we lift these over and there's usually always kind of like, um, so you'll see there's a wood larves over there. There's a really weird looking spider, which I'm not going to go near. Uh, we've got snails growing under here as well. We usually have worms and slugs, um, but yeah, it's a really good place to find like find little creatures that you can um, that you can look into. So in the middle here, we've just got a table which we sit and have our lunch at. Sometimes, um, if the weather's nice, I mean, even if it's not, we always come out here and we'll usually have snack time here, um, or just like eat as family. If I'm childminding, then we'll all sit here and have our lunch together, uh, which is really nice. I love being outdoors. So springtime is my absolute favourite time of year. As you can see, we've got some amazing weather. Like not a cloud in sight, which is just phenomenal. So we've got lots of flowers, lots of plants growing here, which I think is really important in a kind of Montessori garden because it attracts a lot of bugs and bees um, which and butterflies, which are obviously really lovely to um, explore and investigate and kind of take notice of. So children love to listen to the sounds of the bees um, and get a good look at them. Another really simple great idea, I put this log standing up because this area is also very wet so we get lots of worms under here so Mia loves coming and just because it's really light she can just lift it up and have a look and see if there's any kind of worms and things under there and she'll get her magnifying glass and we can have a little look at those. Um, her favourite thing at the moment is worms so I just got this really cool book so she could learn a lot more about them. So we read this this morning and then we found some worms which she had a little look at. Um, but yeah, this is a great book actually. It's really uh, educational and it's got some great pictures of different, loads of facts actually. I learned so much about worms from that book this morning. It's like literally, isn't it crazy as a parent? You, you're pretty much learning as you go along and you're learning all these things that you just didn't know. It's really weird. So over here we've got our sand pit um, and then we've got just some extra kind of outdoor play toys that can you can use in the sand pit over here. We're growing some garlic over here and then I've just got some, I made these bean bags um, a few weeks ago which were made using these really small um, like jute bags that tie up at the top. I got these from Amazon. Um, so they're just filled with beans and lentils. Um, but I've got these over here so she can grab them and she can practice throwing and playing with those. I've also got a big pot here which she can practice throwing them into. And we've got a couple of um, different hoops which she can use as well. Uh, but yeah, we had loads of fun this morning doing that. It was a really fun activity. If you want me to link these, um, I'll put those below. Uh, really cheap off Amazon and I just numbered them because I use them for a different kind of counting activity. Um, but anytime you can put numbers on things like this, especially with a young toddler, they'll start to recognise these numbers more in their environment if they're exposed to them. And then over here I keep a child size um, broom so she can help me sweep in the evenings. It's like a practical life activity which she can do really easily and it's another way for her to take care of her environment and her home and to get everything nice and tidy at the end of the day and kind of help out you know, as part of the family. 
So because Mia's really into kind of small world play, imaginative play, I made this really cute uh, fairy garden. Um, so she'll bring uh, like little food out here for the fairies and she'll play with them and she's got these little outdoor animals and she'll just make up kind of little stories with them which is super cute. I kind of wish I had a fairy house that opened like it had the doors and windows it was a bit more interactive which would be cool um, but yeah she still enjoys playing with this and then it's another way for us to kind of care for our environment she helps me water all the plants at the end of the day so it's another job for her to learn a skill in um, and obviously be part of the family and have a role to play and be useful. We've also got some herbs growing over here, um, so there's lots of opportunities for taking care of the environment, growing food, learning how things grow, um, all those important things that we need to know about and nature and, and environment. Um, and as I said, with any home really, you can fit these kind of things anywhere, like a bucket, a trough, you know, whatever, it's super easy. Um, and then we've also got some balls, which I pop under here. So that's pretty much it, that's our garden. Um, we've got all those different elements kind of squeezed into a small garden but we've still got a lot of space to run around. Um, and it's all very natural so it doesn't look kind of too much like a children's garden. We can still use it um, as adults and for entertaining and it kind of ticks all the boxes really.